Good afternoon or good morning everybody. Welcome to today's quick live session where we're going to be looking at a shot that was submitted by uh, one of our valued customers, of course, as part of our green competition that has been running uh, recently as well. So fortunately, uh, Andrea Pozzoni, hopefully I've got your name right, Andrea, uh, who sent this shot to us, allowed me to edit it. And it's a great shot. Uh, beautifully named Silhouette Moto. Um, so this is uh, Andrea's edit. So this is just a JPEG as you can see. And if we zip up the top here to the first variant, sorry, this variant, that's how it comes out of camera. And this is what I was playing around with just uh, before the broadcast started. Um, it's a really nice, interesting edit actually, because uh, it's slightly untraditional that, as you can see with Andrea's version, that uh, he's really killed the blacks, which I think works great in this respect. Normally we're trying to bring out some kind of shadow detail, but it goes to show that's not always the case that we need to maximize the dynamic range of the camera. Um, there's some nice tricks we can do with the green in the background uh, as well, and also some healing. So it's quite a, an interesting edit with a lot of different facets, actually. So any questions that pop up along the way, do feel free to pop them in either Facebook or YouTube, and then we will try and answer them as we go. So let's just check. Let's gonna hit reset just to make sure that really is on zero settings which is so that's great i'm going to hide the browser so we get um, a bit more space now before we get to any editing uh, what i'm gonna do is use the keystone tool because i want to square up this bit in the middle so it's just a little bit more you know square <laughs> for want of a better word uh, just so it's <coughs> excuse me nice and neat and orderly and structured and everything as well now what we could do is use the keystone tool in this mode but i tell you i'm not going to use that so basically what the keystone tool does if we want to pop around you know a square object and let's try it and um, the reason why i'm probably not going to go with this method is because right in the center of the photo and i can't quite see the line at the bottom but the closer we go to the center of the photo with the keystone tool whether we're doing verticals uh, horizontals or a combination of the two, the closer you are into the, the center of the photo, the less accurate it is like to be, uh, it is likely to be. So what I, I'd probably more likely going to do with this shot is just adjust it manually by eye. So I'm not looking to get it perfect, I just want to get it a bit squarer. But let's actually see what happens if we do it this way. So if I say apply, it's actually not too bad to be honest. So if we throw in a crop, and let's just see what it looks like or if I want to adjust that a little bit. It's actually squared it up quite nicely. So I'm gonna eat my words and stick with that. Probably what I might do is just rotate it a tiny bit and decide exactly where I wanna have my cropping, but it's not actually. Now the question is, do we want a bit of that wall in or do we wanna crop that out? I think I'm gonna crop that out because it's quite bright at the top. So it's going to be a little bit distracting. So there's my crop and it's actually squared it up quite nicely, which is great. So otherwise what I was going to do is just play around with those um, sliders, vertical and horizontal, just to manually pull it in that direction. But looking at it on the screen actually looks pretty good. So uh, next thing to do, now exposure wise, it's actually pretty good out of the camera. The camera's done a great job of judging the backlighting and everything else, and it's not a bad even exposure, really. What did Andrea shoot this on? I know it's a Fuji, uh, 18 to 55, XT30. So well done, XT30. It's actually done pretty good. Now, generally what we would think would be, okay, I wanna pull out all this detail from the um, shadows. But in this case, if we do that, it completely kills the feeling of the photo. And I'll show you, there's loads of room there. So if we open up the shadows, you can see what's going on. So we could still keep these people as a silhouette and open up the background a bit more. But personally, I think that's way more interesting just to have a little hint of what's going on in the background. But it looks far, far nicer just having those nice dark shadows. Same goes for the black. If we pull open the blacks, then you can see it's liberating quite a lot, but it really is not a nice look. So just because your camera has uh, oodles of um, dynamic range doesn't necessarily mean you have to show it. 
so when I was playing around with this earlier, I was in two minds whether to actually open up any shadows. And if anything, I might do a tiny bit and just pull down the blacks a little bit. So if we look in the deep corner, we've got a hint of something, but it's just really is that hint. We want these two people to be in a nice silhouette, which we can see. And there's just a little hint there, which is nice. A little bit of detail coming off the, the top of their crash helmets, but otherwise that's pretty good. So I would leave that alone, to be honest. Okay, um, next thing to do, contrast-wise. Again, we need to be a little bit careful with the contrast. If we look at the histogram, if we brighten this up a touch, which we could do, I'd be hesitant to use exposure because that's going to lift our shadows as well. If we bring the brightness up a bit, it's kind of messing up our nice green background. So I'd even hesitate to do that. What I will do is pull in the highlight slider a bit so we get a bit more brightness and a bit more contrast on the back. It does make the green look a little bit flat, but we're going to fix that in the advanced color editor and actually use uh, the skin tone tool as well. Um, which might sound weird because this isn't a skin tone, but we can actually use the skin tone tool to even up the colors on the background, which I wanted to do as well. So by pulling this in, if we just pull that back out and pull that in, that brightens up the background, essentially stretching out our histogram so we have a nice even contrast going across the top. Uh, highlight wise, it's maybe a little bit too hot in this corner, just looking at that so we could bring the highlights down ever so slightly. We could always burn a bit back in if we needed to. We'll see. Maybe we'll do that, but I'll just pull those down a tiny bit. I don't want to flatten off what I just did uh, in the levels tool as an example. So contrast wise, all looking pretty good and so on. Uh, do I want to put a little bit of clarity in? Let's see. If we pull that to uh, the extreme, it's not too bad actually. So let's just go to a little bit around there. So if I click and hold on clarity, you can see before and after. So that just gives us a little bit more contrast, but I don't want to pull too much in. Okay, now the interesting bit comes when we want to play around with uh, the green in the background. So just uh, around here, because uh, we can improve that uh, and also even it out a little bit somewhere, uh, somewhat, which uh, as I said, is a good use of the skin tone tool. So let's go to our color editor. I'm going to use the advanced color editor because it means we can really control the range that we want to, to pick up or at least the color range that we want to edit. So we're going to grab our color picker right here. I'm going to click on the green panel in the background. Capture One's going to show me the color range that we're going to edit. And if I turn on view selected color range, and then everything will go to black and white, which is not part of that range. Now that's a pretty satisfying uh, color selection without us having to do anything. So that's just picked up really nicely, the panel in the background. Fortunate in this shot that there isn't anything else green, um, which makes it particularly apt uh, for this challenge as well. So let's turn off view selected color range. I want to saturate this a bit more, so it's a bit more vibrant, so we can pull up the saturation a touch and I'm going to darken it down a little bit as well just so it's a bit more sympathetic to the silhouettes if it's too bright then it's just not as interesting really so I think it looks nicer as a dark darker rich green like so now <clears throat> the interesting thing here is that the tonal range of the greens varies a little bit so we've got a deeper more saturated green here it gets a bit paler and so on I personally think it would be nice uh, if we could pull all that together a little bit. Now there's a couple of ways we can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. We could just go straight to our skin tone tool and start playing around there. But I think I want to keep this color edit and our skin tone adjustment, which you will all become clear in a second. I want to keep those on separate layers purely because it will give me the chance to play around with the opacity a bit without affecting one or the other. Now the nice thing is we've got this perfect color selection which is exactly uh, our green paneling here. So what we can do in our color editor is click on the three dots and say create, create masked layer from selection. 
Now it could be slightly overkill, but I think it's, for those of you who are newer to Capture One, uh, it could be interesting to actually see how this works as well. So I'm gonna do this, as I said, slightly overkill, but, but for editing, it will keep everything up nice and separate. So I'm gonna say create mask layer from selection, couple of seconds, and then now we've got a new adjustment layer. So if I press M on my keyboard for mask, then you can see where that masked area is like so. So it's just pulled out that paneling really nicely behind those people. Now what we can do is on our skin tone tab, we can have our color evening adjustment on a separate layer. So let's just call this green align like so. We can have this on a separate layer without affecting our background layer where we've also got our color edit. So let's go to our green al align layer, go to our skin tone tool, grab the picker here. Now we're gonna click on our target color. So this is the color that we want to align everything else to. So if I click on this, again, we're gonna see a similar range to as was picked before. I'm just gonna expand that out a little bit to make sure we capture everything. And under here, we've got some uniformity sliders. So as I drag those sliders across, what will happen is everything in that color selection will get transformed to that pick point. So that's this dot here. So as we pull those sliders across, everything will get transformed to that point, thus making uh, snapping the colors all to the same color, which is why it's particularly good for skin tone, because if you have any different patches of skin color, then you can align everything quite nicely. So if I drag hue across, you can see that change. If we drag saturation across, you can now see this gets more saturated to match this. If we drag lightness across, then it now matches as though it was all exactly the same color. Now that's a bit unnatural. So I'm gonna bring lightness back a bit. So we've got that light on there and saturation a tiny bit and just bring the hue back. But now if we turn this layer off, you can see before and after like so. So it's just made that all slightly similar. Now the amount sliders up here, these will actually change the represented color that I picked. So just keep that in mind that this will change the pick color, this will change the alignment of the colors in that range. So two different things. So if I pull saturation to the left, then it's gonna desaturate everything. If I pull the hue in this direction, it's gonna uh, essentially walk the color around the circle in that way. And if I go this direction, it's gonna head towards the more teal zone. But I don't wanna change that color of my target color. I actually could make it a bit more saturated. I just wanna align everything in that space. Okay, um, kind of relevant question from uh, Mickey. Oh, that's not Mickey, that's Martin. Sorry, Martin, that was in response to something else. Mickey, can you change the color of the sky to look red when the photo has blue with white clouds? You can technically, Mickey, if you were to, if we go back to the background color in the advanced color editor, if you pull the hue slider, that will gradually, so if you've got your blues over here, you need to pull the hue slider and then it will gradually transform the colors towards the reds. But as you've got 30 degrees max change, you might have to do a couple of different picks. So you could just pick it multiple times, uh, Mickey, and drag that hue slider around and then blue will actually become red eventually. So uh, it is possible. All right, a um, couple of questions about full screen, which I think has been answered. Uh, so that was Martin. So sorry to just ditch you off the screen, Martin, but I think you've been answered in the comments. All right, so that aligns that a bit better. I'm just squinting at the photo. Just gonna go into my rotation and use my down cursor key. So I'm just gonna give it point one of another degree. If you want to use grid for alignments, if we go to view and just go to guide, sorry. So if we turn on guides and we grab our pointer tool here, then we can always move guides, ar guides around to see the alignment. So technically I could go, if I was being super pedantic, one more left, but just balancing it with the vertical, kind of happy with that compromise. So let's stick with that turn those guides off so they're not distracting. Okay, so we've done our green alignment. Let's turn that layer off so you can see before and after. We could also play with the opacity if you didn't want it full strength. So that's 
also something you can do as well. Okay, last couple of things that we want to change, which may or may not be successful. Uh, with me, I'm always playing around with the crop, so I think I'll just change the crop a bit more. I'm trying to decide if whether the cables at the top are distracting or not, so maybe a touch. So this sign here, I did successfully manage to get rid of that yesterday. Now, I might have just been lucky, uh, but let's, um, let's try it again. So I'm gonna grab the heel brush over here. I'm gonna zoom in because the tricky bit here is kind of getting a brick in the correct alignment. So let's make sure brush relatively soft and small. Now, when you heal, you can just let Capture One guesstimate where the source point uh, is gonna be. So I want the bricks to match up. So if I grab a source point here manually and then start brushing here, then those bricks should align quite nicely. So let's try that. So to manually pick a source point, you wanna hold down Option or Alt on your keyboard. So let's click in that corner of the brick there. We can always move it a little bit afterwards if needs be, but I'm gonna start brushing around here and then we're gonna add in a few more bricks. Now I need to shift that guy that way a bit. So let's just add in a bit more and then see if we can magically <coughs> budge this over. So I might have to come to the next brick. Let's see what we can do. So if I select that and use my cursor keys, then I can gradually shift this over tapping my cursor key and hope we get to a point where the brick alignment still works. So I'm gonna shift this probably, we could probably get away with that. We'll see when we zoom out. Now we need to erase this bit. So I'll grab my erase brush. I'm gonna make this smaller with maximum flow. And then we're just gonna take this bit out here. So the corner of our wall reappears. And let's see if that's believable when we zoom out. It's actually all right, isn't it? You'd never know there was a sign there. <coughs> Excuse me, let's turn that layer on and off and that does a pretty good job. I just find it's a little bit distracting to have both of those big bright signs. That one would be tricky because it's got a shadow across it. So I'm not going to attempt that because you'd be watching me for five minutes going back and forward. But getting rid of that one just over on the left hand side I think removes um, a good distraction. <laughs> um, Melissa says, David, that clone was like magic. That was just pure luck. I think there, Melissa, but it's not bad, actually. Technically, you could argue, look, there's, we've got a little smaller brick there. Um, but I think I could probably push it even further left and pick up some bigger bricks. But no one's going to be counting your bricks when they look looking at that. Um, can you hold down shift with arrows for a faster move? Yes, you can, actually. So if you want to move 10 pixels in one go, you can shift click. A single pixel is just um, one pixel. Okay, um, let's see. I think that we were good for questions. There we go, yep, that's good. All right, so uh, Jim had a alternative idea. I'm wondering if the bigger crop would be better that the big black area at the top seems to be a bit heavy. You know, Jim, I went back and forth for a while looking at this, so let's have a look. So we could go even tighter, to be honest. By the way, if you're struggling to see what's going on in the background, don't forget in Capture On Preferences, under Crop, um, you can always look at, uh, let's see the opacity here. So if you wanna darken that down a bit, especially with a moody subject like this, or you can play around with the brightness, that's actually a little bit easier to see as well for this one to help us cropping. So yeah, we could do all kinds of different things. I just didn't want to crop out too many megapixels. I imagine Andrea had to work pretty fast to capture this um, so we can cap crop a little bit more out. We're comparing to Andrea's in a second. Um, let's have a look. Uh, uh, Bill says, I find healing a major attribute. Yeah, it's super handy, especially in something like this it would be really annoying to have to go to out into Photoshop just to do that little fix. So it's nice that we can do it here. If you wanted to get rid of that drain pipe, we could as well, but I think that just works quite nice. Maybe this one, that sticker, if I'm being pedantic, if we just grab the heel brush again and we do the same thing. 
So let's make this a bit smaller because, and then I'm gonna pick probably this point around here, option click, and then I'm aligning those two pieces. Let's see if we're lucky again and just heal that. And then this one, I'm gonna have to move in that direction a touch like so. So there we go, that worked uh, pretty good as well, I think. So it's a little minor distraction, but if we turn that heel layer off, now my OCD is more satisfied because it's looking cleaner at the back. All right, I think that's really, if I was to fiddle around a bit more, I might just bring up the brightness with the Luma curve in the background, but make sure my midtones don't get a bit too bright, just to give that a little bit of a bump so it's brighter in the background, so it enhances that silhouette. But I think that's probably where I would use it. Good question from Keith. Uh, healing advantages over cloning. So the difference between the two, Keith, uh, and I don't think I'd change my mind over here, but clone would do a like for like pixels. So it would simply grab, if we just turn our healing on again, it would simply grab the pixels, what I've done there, and copy it across. Sometimes that can work, but it very rarely um, looks natural because there's always a subtle luminosity difference between area A and area B. What cloning can be useful for and what I've used it for a few times is copying catch lights in, in eyes. So if you've taken a portrait and you've got a catch light in one eye and it's missing in the other, then clone is really handy to copy the catch light over and no one would ever know you cheated. But generally, if you're trying to remove something, then healing works better than cloning. If you watch uh, the tutorial video on healing and cloning, Keith, it actually uses the same photo uh, shot by Phil Penman, and one aspect works better, or one part of the photo works better by using healing, taking out some seagulls, uh, in the sky and another aspect works better with cloning. So if you try healing and it doesn't quite work, then you can also try cloning as well. And don't forget you've got your opacity. So you can always drag the opacity down on the heel layer if you want to bring a little hint of it back. But I think taking those two things out uh, helps quite nicely. <laughs> My OCD is kicking to play with keystones. Exactly, you can have hours of fun aligning things to be uh, nice and square. Gary said you learned something. Great, glad to hear it, Gary. All right, let's have a look at the before and after, because how are we doing for time? Perfect. So if we click on before and after, then we can see as it came out of camera. Remember with your before and after, it's not gonna show the compositional changes, because that would be kind of annoying seeing the non-keystoned one behind it, but I'll make another variant in a minute so you can check. Um, and then after, with our little nifty skin tone edit on the green and the few bits of healing just to make it a little bit cleaner, like so. So uh, this was Andrea's shop. So we're actually pretty close in terms of density. Uh, the only difference between me and Andrea is that I did got rid of those bits and pieces and messed around with the paneling in the background to align that. If we look at the original, uh, let's just reset that. So if we look at the original and the edit, let's turn off our extra border, get rid of the browser. So if you look at the original on the left and our edit, then you can see the difference that the keystone has made as well. Let's just zoom into both of those a little bit as well. Appreciate we're looking on small screens like so. But otherwise, didn't require a great deal of editing because Andrea did a nice shot out of the bag. It's just those simple enhancements and well done catching that, that fleeting moment as well. Okay, um, brilliant. Tim says that was great. Learned a few more things today. You're welcome. Um, if you want to learn more things, uh, don't forget you can check back on Thursday uh, for our normally scheduled webinar. Um, it's just, it's a very simple webinar. Just pretty much doing this, but five times over, I just have to work faster to get five shots done in one hour. Maybe that was a bit ambitious and it should have been four. Anyway, uh, if you want to watch that on Facebook or YouTube, you can come back same time on Thursday and you're, you can pick it up there. If you want to be reminded, of course, you can also register for the webinar itself at learn 
www.capture1.com. You'll see the webinars up the top or just simply check back into Facebook or YouTube this time uh, on Thursday as well. Great. Thanks for joining uh, everyone today and I hope to see your friendly faces also on Thursday as well. Take care everyone and see you all soon. Bye now.